Hello, I am Ricky J, and welcome to another reaction towards anthems. We did uh, Star Spangled Banner. There's been a lot of uh, comments about it being true, uh, lies, uh, everything like that. That is not for me to judge. Uh, I can definitely watch some of the videos or links you posted about it being wrong. Here's the truth. Uh, I can do that, definitely. Uh, we did Sweden, the Swedish National Anthem. You guys appreciated that. And I was Googling around a bit, thinking about what can I do? What kind of, what, what anthem am I uh, interested in? How it actually became. And there's a lot of them out there. So there's going to be a few of these videos because I am, I'm very interested in how it all started. So one of my favorites is, of course, uh, Sweden's, America's, and of course, Canada's, Oh Canada. And that is a favorite, one of the best anthems out there in the entire world. This is definitely one of the best. And I was Googling for a bit and I thought, well, I'm just going to check YouTube to see if there's anything at all that could, like, say anything. And I found a video which was had the weirdest title and I couldn't really explain why because I don't know why it's the bizarre history of O Canada and the channel is on YouTube of course is Canadiana Canadiana go check that out link will be in the description for that and give him a like because it seems to me like the the video is of high quality very informative and it's going to be super fun to find out what this is about and i'm gonna see if i could uh just get rid of a couple of the there you go that should work and let's see what it's all about i have no clue <laughs> Oh, that's loud. I'm sorry about that. Go. This is 1968, the Saint-Jean-Baptiste Parade in Montreal. All right. That year, the celebration of Quebec's national holiday descended into a bloody riot. Oh. The violence began with the guests of honor being pelted by a hail of rocks and bottles. And in the middle of it all, Pierre Elliott Trudeau the target the protesters are aiming for. And in less than 24 hours, he will be elected Prime Minister of Canada for the first time. But even more unexpected than the story of the riot that happened here is the connection it has to a song you might know. Our national anthem. So let's dive into the bizarre history of O Canada. A tale of two solitudes woven over hundreds of years. To do that, we'll need to go back to the beginning, to a time before the riots in Montreal, before the decades of unrest in Quebec, before Confederation itself, to a time long before O Canada was written. This is Canadiana. One thing that's got me is super loud. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to crank it down a bit. One thing is bizarre. Why is it bizarre? <laughs> I'm so interesting. How? Why is it interesting? Why Why is it bizarre? Because the Swedish is uh, is not that like, oh my God, big story. It doesn't really matter. I love my country and I love my national uh, anthem. Just don't worry about it. And America had their version on how the Star Spangled Banner came to life. Why is it bizarre? 1646. This spot on the banks of the St. Lawrence River looked very different than it does today. That's Quebec City over there. But back then, it was a brand new town of just about 30 houses. Those first few French settlers had come a long, long way to start their new city. This land had been home to indigenous nations for thousands of years. But to the French, this was a strange and wild place on the very edge of their empire. Their first winter here, nearly all of the original settlers died. Surrounded by danger, they took comfort in the traditions they brought with them across the ocean. On a summer night in 1646, there were bonfires lit by the first governor of New France. A Jesuit missionary read prayers, and cannons were fired in honor of St. John the Baptist. 
Saint Jean Baptiste. The French had been celebrating Saint Jean Baptiste Day for more than a thousand years, but in Quebec, it would take on a unique importance. And without it, O Canada wouldn't exist. Okay. But to understand why, it helps to fast forward 200 years and to head over there into the city itself. One thing, one thing, I gotta say this, he is insanely good at getting me intrigued. He is insanely good at this. It's extremely good for me uh, because uh, it's, it's, I don't know how many of you guys are actually interested in, in, in finding out how the anthem became to be an anthem for said country. And he is very good at this, I gotta say. By the end of the 1700s, Quebec City was home to thousands of people. The colony had been conquered by the British, and over the course of the 1800s, there were violent clashes between Anglophones and Francophones. Rebels tried to overthrow Quebec's British government. Francophones were demonized by prejudiced conservatives. There were riots, gunfights, and executions. Blood ran in the streets. And when Quebec joined Confederation, many worried that French-Canadian culture was in more danger than ever before. Saint-Jean-Baptiste Day had become deeply political. One of the rebels even founded a Saint-Jean-Baptiste society. Oh. 1880 was going to be an especially important year. The society was bringing Francophones together for the first ever National Congress of French Canadians. And to mark the special occasion, they were going to commission a special song, an anthem. To write it, they teamed the city's best musician up with its most prolific writer. This is Calixa Lavallee, who wrote the music. And this is Sir Adolphe Basile Houtier, who wrote the original French lyrics. Lavallee was known as Canada's first national musician, but his compositions had wowed audiences from New York to Paris. He'd even found himself fighting in the infamous Battle of Antietam, still the bloodiest day in American history. The man who wrote the music for O Canada was a veteran of the American Civil War. On the other side, you had Routier, the lyricist, who preferred to stay home and write poetry. La Vallée was a liberal. When he wasn't busy writing music about butter... The perfect combination of two guys, right? Butterflies, he was composing satirical operas about colonialism. Routier was a deeply religious conservative. As a judge on Quebec's Supreme Court, he declared that it was perfectly fine for priests to tell their parishioners that if they didn't vote for the Conservatives, they would burn in hell. You can still find his religious views in O'Canada to this day. Yeah, that's that's a thing. That's a thing. I mean, combining politics with with uh, religion. I think that's a thing back then. It shouldn't be allowed. It shouldn't be allowed one one bit. But I guess a uh, back then, probably today. I'm not really. Um, well aware of the situation that's the thing today but back then i could it's all about power isn't it Just take a look at the lyrics he wrote canada is personified as a flower wreath god holding a sword in one hand and a cross in the other but the music of o canada was an entirely different matter la valet made his melody by taking bits and pieces from other tunes for instance, from a popular French folk song called The Beautiful Snow, Voici la neige qui brille. Oh. oh my God, that's so beautiful. But more importantly, La Vallée took some of his melody from one of the most popular musical compositions of the time, Mozart's The Magic Flute. It was an opera that was famously Whoa. critical. Wow, I did not know that. Of organized religions. The new anthem was a strange and controversial mix, both religious and secular, kind of the perfect soundtrack to a sacred holiday that was becoming more and more political. And so it was on this spot that O Canada was performed for the very first time between the city's old stone walls and the brand new parliament buildings just under construction, the Saint-Jean-Baptiste Society held their Saint-Jean-Baptiste Day event here in a hockey arena. It was a great day for French-Canadian culture, but over the next 80 years, French-English tensions would be brought to a boiling point. 
until this same holiday. I'm, I gotta say, I'm not. I'm, I'm. I am a huge fan of history, and I love history. Everything about it doesn't really matter what's about. I just like it. I love it, and it's. It's just. It's just wonderful to hear what happened and how things evolved in different situation and it's definitely not limited to uh, to war I, I love read about second world war i love to read about vietnam war and but i'm not limited to that because i really want to know because you can learn so much about history and i know nothing about canada's history and i am quite embarrassed about it why why recky you're swedish why would you care about the the history of like canada I think it's my duty as a human being just to know a bit more about at least the major countries of the Western world. And of course, the other countries that is not, a, is not it shouldn't be limited to the Western world. We should just know. That's just me. What do you think? Would be celebrated by throwing rocks at Pierre Trudeau. Separatism was on the rise, demanding independence for the province. Vive le Québec libre. And to the separatists, Trudeau was a traitor, a francophone running for prime minister who believed in the idea of a united Canada. When he showed up at the Saint-Jean-Baptiste parade on the final night of his campaign, people were enraged. This was Quebec's day, a day to celebrate their own separate identity. Voices from the crowd chanted Trudeau to the gallows, and it was no idle threat. That spring, Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr. had both been assassinated. In Quebec, separatist terrorists had already carried out deadly bombing campaigns. But as the protesters began to throw rocks and bottles, Trudeau didn't back down. While other dignitaries scattered, he refused to leave. They say that moment helped to win him the election. Anglophones had been slow to trust him, but they loved to see Trudeau pissing off the separatists. The parade descended into chaos. Hundreds were arrested. Things only got worse from there. Two protesters, Paul Hose and Jacques Lauteau, met for the first time that night in the back of a police van. They soon became leaders of the separatist FLQ terrorist group. Just two years after the big riot, Hose and Langteau helped to organize the October crisis. A British diplomat was kidnapped. A provincial cabinet minister was murdered. Oh my God. I did not know this. When I think about Canada, I think about Pleasant people, nice, kind, polite, and they I think they have the same thing as we have in Sweden when you drive your vehicle a day while the sun is still out, you still have to have your headlights on. I think that's the same thing in Canada. We have that in Sweden. It makes no sense, but it's the law. So in my mind, Sweden and Canada has always been pretty much the same. This reminds me of not Canada. I know how I know Quebec didn't want to be over there. They want to be alone. It's us here. You guys can bugger off. Pierre Trudeau, now the prime minister, declared martial law. How far would you go with that? How far would you extend that? Well, just watch me. Oh, damn. The battle between separatism and federalism became one of the defining issues of Trudeau's time in office here in Ottawa. Faced with a splintering country, Trudeau was determined to give Canada a stronger sense of its own identity. But more than a hundred years after Confederation, the country still didn't have its own national anthem. And in the century since O Canada had been commissioned for Saint-Jean-Baptiste Day, it had caught on with English-speaking Canadians too. It helped that the English lyrics were completely different from the original French. Oh. Practically the only thing the two versions have in common are the words O Canada. And when King George stood at attention for O Canada during an official event, it became a weird hybrid, a Quebecois anthem symbolically approved by the ruler of the British Empire. It was a song for those who believed in a multicultural society, but getting it approved by Parliament was still a pain in the ass. More than a dozen times they tried, and every time they failed. What? As Trudeau pushed for O Canada, René Lévesque, the separatist premier of Quebec, made Saint-Jean-Baptiste Day, the official national holiday of the province, 
as Trudeau fought for unity, Levesque was preparing a referendum for Quebec to leave Canada. Everything came to a head on a spring day in 1980. All across Quebec, voters headed to the polls to decide whether or not they still wanted to be Canadians. When the results came in, the separatists had lost. Quebec would remain part of Canada. Trudeau. I did not know they had a referendum on that. I, I didn't know that. And it's just so bizarre. It's, it is bizarre history of old Canada. And, and I couldn't understand why, he's, why is he calling it the bizarre history. But it's so bizarre because I did not know it. And I love that I do this. I love that I'm looking at this. I love that I get the information. Seized the opportunity. It was here, in the parliament buildings behind me, that the National Anthem Act was finally passed during the week of Saint Jean Baptiste Day in 1980. A week later, just a month after the failed referendum, Canadians gathered here on Parliament Hill to celebrate Canada Day and the old anthem of Quebec's national holiday was performed as Canada's national anthem for the very first time. But that wasn't the end of the story. Okay. Oh, Canada was born to be the soundtrack of Quebec nationalism, but Trudeau had transformed it into the anthem for the entire country. So Quebec needed a new song. This is where Paul Sauvé Arena used to stand in Montreal. And on that night in 1980, the night the referendum failed, René Levesque was here. As it became clear the quest for independence had fallen short, at least for now, he stepped out on a stage in front of a disappointed crowd of more than 5,000 people. Some were crying, some were flying the fleur de lis. They gave him an emotional ovation that lasted more than five minutes. And then they started singing. It was a song called Jean du Pays, written by separatist folk singer Gilles Vigneault, who first performed it on Saint Jean Baptiste Day. 100 years after O Canada was first performed, thousands of defiant voices were singing a new anthem. It was, Levec said, the most beautiful moment of his life. And this is for O Canada. I really wasn't kidding when I said that Anglophones and Francophones are singing two very different national anthems. Uh, so for instance, when Anglophones are singing about glowing hearts, Francophones are singing about swords. Anglophones stand on guard for thee, Francophones stand on guard for our rights. Uh, we shared more about the lyrics of O Canada on the Canadiana blog, which you can read by clicking right down here. And if you'd like to know more about the bizarre history of O Canada and all the most incredible stories in Canadian history, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We're at This Is Canadiana. You'll find links in the descriptions below. If you like this video and you'd like to watch more, you can subscribe. We have many more amazing stories to tell. And to do it. Okay, okay, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna boom right there. And I'm gonna leave it a thumbs up. Okay. Let's try to sum this. It's I can't I can't sum it. But first of all, did you know about this? If you're Canadian, did you know about this? If you if Canadian and did not know about this, say so in the comment section. It was a mind blowing uh video to watch. I had no clue that the this happened in in, uh, in Canada. Uh, and uh, I know so little about Canada, and I, I, I am, like I said, I'm quite embarrassed about it because I should know. I should know because I, I like, I love history. Uh, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a long video, so I'm gonna actually wrap it up here. Thank you so much to my Patreons. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. Much appreciated. And a shout out to my Supreme Tier donators, uh, Mr. Buddha Squirrel. David Banks and of course uh, Sean Pearson. Thank you so much for that. It means a bunch for me. 
leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more and if there's a special anthem out there you want me to react to to the history of it say so in the comment section and if you want to join my patreons the link will be in the comment section thank you for watching i'm ricky j stay safe